And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Ghost Ship. Captain, this fog's getting thicker. The lake is getting rough. I'm afraid if we don't put into harbor soon, we'll be caught in a storm. Come in, Jenkins, and close that door. But, sir, things are getting worse out here, and the crew knows we should have reached Toronto Harbor 16 hours ago. I said shut that door. Yes, sir. Jenkins, what I'm about to tell you is not to leave this room. Aye, sir. The reason that we haven't put into harbor yet is a simple one. According to every instrument on this bridge, checked and rechecked by every man here, we arrived in Toronto Harbor on schedule this afternoon. Sir... There were no markers, no buoys, no sign of land through the breaks in the fog. We checked and rechecked our calculations and came in slowly. There was nothing there. What about the radio? Nothing but static. Spark says he's never heard anything like it. Either the entire city is gone, or someone or something has caused our instruments to malfunction. We've been waiting for the weather to clear so we can bring the ship in the old-fashioned way. Yes, sir. I'm telling you this because I know the crew listens to you, Jenkins. Get back out there. Get every man's mind back to their duty. Yes, sir. Now what's going on? Captain, I think you'd better come look at this, sir. Haven't got time for this sort of nonsense. Great Caesar's ghost, what is that? Uh, Some of the men were talking about this, sir. uh, About a strange green glow closing in through the fog for the last hour. That's more than just a glow. That's a ship. An old tall ship making her way straight for us. What could she be doing out here in these seas? She's a half mile out and coming out fast, sir. Do you think she sees us? Easy, Mr. Jenkins. I'm not sure what you think that old girl can do to a modern steel hull like ours. What was that? Captain, the hull's been breached. We're taking on water fast. Man the lifeboats. Abandoned ship. That ghost ship. That's what did us in. Gentlemen, gentlemen, your attention, please. You've all heard the fate of the St. Paul, the first ship to fall victim to this ghost ship that plagues our waterways. Since then, a dozen ships have met with the same fate. Lost in the open water, steered miles off course by force, or forces unknown and sunk under mysterious circumstances. Each man here has a vested interest in the shipping industry in this city, and each man here deserves to know the truth. But the police and government have been woefully unable to prevent these attacks. Mr. Cowan, if I may. Yes, Chief O'Malley. As Chief of Police, I would like nothing more than to see this threat to our city's shipping industry put to rest. But my department's jurisdiction extends only as far as the harbor and the city islands. If your ships cannot make it into Toronto Harbor, my police force cannot protect them. And I know from conversations with my colleagues in the Coast Guard that they simply do not have the resources to comb the lake looking for ghost ships. If we cannot glean from this mountain of eyewitness testimony a clue to the identity of those behind this monstrous plot, then I suggest we temporarily halt all ship traffic into Toronto. If I may interject. With all due respect, sir, you are here as a courtesy. Is that so? I had understood I was here as the largest individual shareholder of many of the industrial and shipping concerns that have been struck by this plot. Including your own company, Mr. Cowan. To say nothing of this committee's inability to get to the heart of the matter. Well, I... Besides the circumstances surrounding navigational errors and the sight of this ghost ship, what else did each of these ill-fated voyages have in common? Not a thing. Come now, each was bound for Toronto Harbor with a full load of cargo. Yes, but that's where the common thread ends. Each ship originated its voyage in a different city. Some in Canada, some in the United States. Each came by a different route. What about the cargoes themselves? All different. Weren't most of the cargoes bringing raw materials in some form? None were carrying finished consumer goods or perishable items, were they? 
Well, no. Which suggests that our ghost sailors may have more on their minds than paralyzing the shipping industry. What do you mean? It seems to me more than coincidence that in each case, the cargo would survive the sinking of the ship. I propose this to be an elaborate and very efficient hijacking ring. Ridiculous! It also seems to me, Chief O'Malley, that the criminal ring responsible for these attacks must have a strong source of information within the harbor master's office if they know the routes and arrival times of ships with appropriate cargoes. <laughs> Preposterous! Perhaps, gentlemen, perhaps. I leave you now to the appropriate stroking of your beards and making of clucking noises. I'll take along copies of those eyewitness depositions from the ship's crews, if I may. To what end? To the end of this madness, Mr. Cowan. To the end of this madness. Oh, jeez, Red Panda. Oh, we've been reading these reports for hours. I think my eyes are going to bug right out of my head. Hmm? Did you ever think about getting uh, an underground lair with a little more light? Shadows make for good atmosphere. Hmm, I'll be the only sidekick in town with Coke bottle glasses. You are the only sidekick in town, Kit. And there's a reading lamp behind you. Hmm? Well, I thought that was Professor Zombies in Transo Ray. It was. Now it's a lamp. So it is. Heroic and handy. Impressive. Well, everyone needs a hobby. Tell that to our ghost sailors. You ask me, they're working too hard. They certainly are. And if the result is even a temporary shutdown of the city's shipping industries, it would go very badly for the families that depend upon those jobs. Hmm. To say nothing of the shopkeepers who sell them groceries and other necessities. It doesn't stop there, Kit. The industries that depend upon the raw materials being shipped into the city won't be able to compete without a dependable flow of resources. The city simply cannot take these attacks much longer. So you're saying there's more to this than a bunch of stuffed shirts harumphing over brandy and cigars? There certainly is. And I'm one of those stuffed shirts, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'm the one person who knows that's not true, by the way. So what have we learned from these depositions? Well, we've learned that however much their target selection may be varied, once they've got a ship in their sights, the playbook reads exactly the same. Right. The ship is slowly lured off course. Then the radio goes dead. Then the ghost ship appears. And once it gets to within a half mile, they start taking on water and the crew abandon ship. And our ghost ship vanishes. Hmm. They almost always strike in fog or rough weather, but at this time of year, that's tough to avoid even if they wanted to. True enough. Well, that consistency gives us a tactical advantage. You think? Certainly. But in order to exercise that advantage, we'd have to get close to this ghost ship. Yes. Now are we supposed to find them? Maybe they'll find us. Boss? We have an agent in the harbor master's office, don't we? William Bilkey, file clerk. You want to work the informant angle? No. We need help finding a ship coming by a route not yet targeted by these fiends, with an appropriate cargo of valuable raw materials that wouldn't be spoiled by a little water. And then? Then this ghost ship will receive a visit from the Red Panda. Come in. Ah, Captain Rees, I presume. Mr. Simmons, isn't it? That's right. Sorry I haven't been able to make your acquaintance earlier, but we're always a little pressed for time when getting underway. Not at all. Trust you've been made comfortable? Of course, thank you. Well... Mr. Simmons, to get directly to the point, you're wasting your time here with us, I'm afraid. How so? I understand your insurance company being anxious with all that ghost ship business, but I don't hold much stock in such things. Oh, yes? Yes. I've heard the stories. They say it's an old, tall ship. But even if there were such things, why would a hundred-year-old ghost suddenly appear and start sinking ships? Are you sure it just started? Simmons, I've sailed this lake, man and boy, these forty years. If there were a ghost ship out there... I'd have found it by now. Well, I hope you're right, Captain. But my company felt that as long as I was in the Chicago office already... Well, my time is theirs to waste. Boss, you in there? It's me, Kit. Oh, excuse me. I uh, didn't know you had company. That's all right. Uh, Captain Rees, my assistant, Miss Kerwin. Charmed. But I thought your name was Susan, not Kit. <laughs> Nickname, I'm afraid. Darn thing just stuck. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I do indeed. Well, I should get back to the bridge. Let me know if there's anything you need. Thank you, Captain. We will. Whoops. Yes. Oops. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I'll devise a suitable punishment later. 
What did you learn from the crew? Nothing I care to repeat in polite company. This is a lake freighter. These fellas get to port every few days. <laughs> they act like they haven't seen a girl in I don't know how long. Well, there are girls and there are girls. What does that mean? Nothing. Was that one of your famous drive-by compliments? So the crew doesn't know anything. And now the subject changes. We've been out of sight of land for almost 24 hours. For all we know, we could be veering off course already. For a fella who can follow six conversations at once, you're having an awful lot of trouble with this one. My own portable navigational equipment suggests we're still right on course for Toronto Harbor. <laughs> kind of fun not letting you off the hook for once. Of course, if something is affecting the ship's navigation, it could be having the same effect on my equipment. Do you think it's the casual outfit that drives the sailors wild? Or is it just my eyes? Kit Baxter, behave yourself. <laughs> yes, boss. You sent for me, Captain? Yes, Simmons. As you're probably very aware, we were due in Toronto Harbor six hours ago. Let me guess. According to your instruments, this open patch of empty lake is Toronto Harbor. That's right. It seems there is something to this ghost ship business after all. Maybe more than you know, Captain. Look there, through the fog! What in the name of... Unless I miss my guess, Captain Rees, that unearthly green glow is our ghost ship. And it's closing fast. Incredible. No time for sightseeing, Rees. Get your men to the lifeboats. Lifeboats? Yes, that ghost ship can't be more than two miles out. Each of the other ships started taking on water the moment the ghost ship got to within half a mile. Then we'll have to outrun it. Don't be a fool, man. You've no idea where we are. We can't just strike out blindly in this fog. It could be even more dangerous. Get your men to their evacuation stations. What about you? Well, we've got to recover something from below. Don't worry, we'll be there. Come on, Kit. We've got to change and get to the aquatic gear. There's not a moment to lose. Right. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. That goat ship didn't even slow down going past the lifeboats. It just left us here. Are all hands accounted for? Aye, sir, except that insurance man Simmons and his assistant. What? Check again with the other lifeboats. In these waters, those two don't have a chance. Captain Reese's concern, while heartfelt, is quite unnecessary. For the man posing as a mild-mannered insurance investigator is in reality that masked man of mystery, the Red Panda. And his lovely young assistant is none other than Kit Baxter, the Flying Squirrel. In the time that Reese and his men got to their lifeboats, our heroes changed into special versions of their heroic costumes designed for underwater use and recovered from their quarters, rebreathers, and a special handheld propulsion device designed to move them short distances under the waves at great speed. Thus, at the very moment that Captain Reese expresses concern for the missing passengers, two uninvited guests pull themselves on board the ghost ship. Listen. <coughs> yeah. I think I hated that. Oh, shh. Coast seems fairly clear. So this is a ghost ship. Hmm. Feels remarkably solid for a specter, doesn't it? Red Panda, that strange green glow, it suddenly disappeared. Yes, Squirrel. They must have had a lighting system designed to react with some sort of phosphorescent paint. Turning it on and off would allow them to make the ghost ship appear and disappear. Mm. Sure is dark without it. Yes, that should help us. Help us? This isn't a real ghost ship, Kit. Which means it'll have a real live crew. A crew that we should probably steer clear of till we get where we're going. But, boss, now that we're on the ghost ship, shouldn't we uh, bust some heads and bring her in? At the moment, we've nothing more than circumstantial proof that this ship is even responsible for those other disasters. We need to find out how they're doing it. Doing what? Exactly. And if their motive is, as I suspect, stealing the cargoes of the sunken ships, how are they achieving that? <laughs> but, boss, how are we going to learn all that? By being quiet like two little ship's mice. Come on, let's have a look around. Keep low. There's crewmen in the ship's rigging. I can just make them out. So, this is a real tall ship. Interesting. That's another thing, boss. Why use an old wooden ship for a precision job like this? Unless I miss my guess, Kit. 
find the answer to that in the cargo hold. This way. All clear. Come on. Have you any idea where we're going? Not a clue. But if they're as greedy as most criminals, they'll want as few people in on this as they can manage. Which means most of the crew will have to be on deck. Most? Keep your ears peeled for voices. Or for any electrical or mechanical sound. I don't hear anything. Come on. Wait! Red Panda! I hear a hum. A hum? This way. Here. Behind this door. Hmm. Do you hear voices? No. On three. I'll hit high. You go low. Aye, aye, Captain. One. Two. Three! Nobody home. Just that big granddaddy machine. Yes. After they were finished operating the device, they obviously felt it safe to leave it unguarded. But what is it? It's enormous! Yes. Power generators, inertial compensators, crow and six feedback coils, red panda! If I didn't know any better, I'd swear this was some kind of electromagnetic device. You're exactly right, Squirrel. The largest magnetic field projector I've ever seen. This must be why they used a wooden chip. So the magnetism wouldn't affect their own craft. Right. And look at these dual projector arrays. When the ghost ship closed into within half a mile, they must have polarized two adjacent parts of their target's hull at the same time. The resulting strain literally tore the cargo ships apart below the waterline. But it still doesn't answer everything. No, it doesn't. For that, my dear flying squirrel, I think you and I had better find a place to hide for a few hours. Like a small, dark cubbyhole somewhere where no one can see or hear us? Exactly. Let me think about it. Okay. Well, boss, where do you think we are? Why ask me? I've been in a broom closet with you for four hours, remember? (laughs) I, uh, have a vague recollection of that. And before that, we were already lost. Well... I was, anyway. What's that? N- nothing. Look! Look, they brought the ship into some kind of a, a a hangar. Yes, Kit. Look how the masts are designed to fold down. The ceiling of this building can't be more than ten feet above the hull. Making it about the last place you'd look for a tall ship. Right. What's that over here? Looks like there's room for more ships to dock in here. More ghost ships? Not quite. I think we've found the secret of how they've been recovering the cargo. Submarines! Two of them! Right. And look at those doors. Those submersibles have been specially modified to allow for the recovery of large amounts of undersea material. This is quite an operation. Mm hmm. Which means they don't intend to stop pirating the Great Lakes anytime soon. Let's see what you and I can do about that, shall we? Well, oh, wait. Not that I don't like the odds, but between the ghost ship crew, two sub crews, other workers, and the inevitable cadre of evil geniuses. I hear you, Kit. If this facility is right on the open lake, they'd want to keep it as uninteresting as possible to outsiders. Which means it would have to stay sealed up tight enough to appear abandoned. They must have a controlled ventilation system. You're, uh, making this up as you go along, aren't you? Bingo. How much knockout gas do you have? Uh, two grenades and a canister. You? Seven grenades and three canisters. Don't get smug. You've got more pockets. Well, why don't you wear that new utility belt? It makes me look hippie. Come on. Let's find that air processor before those subs pull out for another load. Commander. Commander Varkin, we found this intruder in the south access chamber. Intruder, you say? That mask, it cannot be. Well, if it cannot be, I guess you could just let me go. The Red Panda. We have heard of you, of course, but we did not expect the day of reckoning with you to be so close at hand. Didn't we? No. We felt that this aquatic operation was unlikely to attract your direct interference. Sorry to disappoint... About this we stuff, 
Are you royalty or just ordinary crazy? I forgive you this moment of insolence, Red Panda. You are ignorant of the full scale of our operation here. I think I've got the nuances down. You use a wooden ship with a lighting system and phosphorescent paint job to carry an electromagnetic device which tears the hulls out of cargo ships whose goods you recover by means of specially modified submarines. Almost depressingly straightforward, really. Silence! If I had any doubt that you'd seen too much, I'm afraid that moment has now quite passed. Gosh, and I'm sure you were planning on letting me go, too. Charming to the last. I wonder, my dear Red Panda, if you even begin to comprehend the forces at work here. What's to comprehend? Your hijackers. Pirates who value your own material gain above the lives of others. To say nothing of the property rights of those you rob, and the workers you would deprive of their livelihood. The world is so very black and white to you. How easy that must be. Yes. It's so easy that I wear a mask and slink through dark alleys, handing out fistfuls of justice. There are forces at work in the world about which you know nothing, masked man. You cloister yourself in your city. You seek to protect its citizens from evil. But there are movements in the world which are larger than good or evil. Movements which can only be called history at work. This is such a moment, and we are such a movement. Well, pirates with delusions of grandeur, what next? The charm of your insolence begins to wear thin. And I was really hoping we'd have a second day. Silence! There is a tide in the affairs of men, Red Panda, and those who refuse to acknowledge the tide are often swept away. I'm sorry, was I meant to be swayed by that mangling of Shakespeare? I am disappointed to find you so flippant. Here we stand upon a precipice. Behind us, the old world to which you belong, tired and corrupt. Before us, the bright future our organization is creating. Every shipment of raw resources we divert makes us stronger and you weaker. The fragile bonds that maintain the fabric of your society strain so easily, leave you open to new ways, new ideas, new leadership. You begin to understand, yes. Understand? I don't know if you're fascists, communists, anarchists, or garden variety nut jobs. Frankly, I'm not that impressed, apart from the uniforms. They're very snappy. <laughs> I. I'm surprised to find you such a fool. I had expected at the very least a foe worthy of our great cause, and perhaps even a new ally. As you say, your society is such that you must slink down the dark alleys to bring your people justice. <clears throat> perhaps you can be persuaded that the problem is too large for one man to fix. Perhaps together we can bring justice to the whole world. I don't think you've got what it takes. Oh, don't get me wrong. Full marks for the whole ghost ship operation. Really impressive. But when they brought me in, you never asked what I was doing. Or why I was doing it in the South Access Chamber, a position of little or no strategic value. <coughs> What are you... And the wise guy routine. To say nothing of my singular failure to take you and your goons apart to escape. <coughs> mm, maybe for all your boasting, you can't tell the decoy when you see him. Squirrel the panda. Come in, red panda. D decoy? <coughs> that voice! You've got squirrels in your attic, Commander. Go ahead, squirrel. It's a super villain slumber party out here, boss. You all clear? Good work. Just waiting on our ghost captain. Red Panda out. How? <coughs> How did you... Simple. Your kind always gloats first and asks questions later. By the way, we're immune to our own knockout gas. Curse you! <coughs> Red Panda! Good night, sweet prince. Sorry about the whole world conquest thing. Maybe you could try taking over C-Block instead. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! 
This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 10, The Ghost Ship, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Scott Moyle, M. John Kennedy, Jonathan Lear, Michael Booth, Gregory Z. Cook, Clarissa Dunetterlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>